Welcome to the very first Bicyclists on Bikes Talking Bull. And uh, actually today I have someone who knows things about things. We have a uh, associate professor? Uh, senior lecturer. Senior lecturer. Um, Rand Park at the uh, University of Minnesota. It's Carlson Business School, right? Carlson School of Management. It's Carlson School of Management. You can see I'm super prepared for this first uh, first recording. But, um, but yeah, so um, as you can see, it's not exactly a lovely day here in um, Minneapolis, Minnesota, but uh, it is a good temperature, I think. Um, so I got rained on a bit earlier and it was not such a nice temperature then, but um, we're doing all right now. So, oh, this is, this is, oh yeah, it is actually, it is closed. Yeah, I was here earlier. Um, yeah. So, uh, I think at 28th is where it's closed. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, um, so those of you who are not from Minnesota, um, we like to say that there are two seasons here, winter and construction. And really, I mean, we have four seasons. We have a fall and a spring. There's no doubt about that. But this, the winter construction thing is so true. Uh, it is just a mess. It keeps things interesting though, you Absolutely. know? Well, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, the, other, the flip side of that is that you don't have to worry about mowing, mowing your grass for like six months. Yeah. If you got a house like me, I grew up in Georgia, I mowed the grass year round. This is better. So, uh, Rand and I met through a mutual acquaintance. Uh, Yancey Strickland. I don't actually know how you guys m know each other, though. So Yancey worked with my mom. Ah. My mom lives in Raleigh, and she was working at Lewisburg College. Yeah. And he was working in the alumni office. Now, how long ago was that? Boy, almost 20 years ago. Okay. Because I worked with Yancey when he was at um, UNC Chapel Hill in the fundraising department there. The development office, as they call it, yes. which I've always thought was weird because I work in technology. So <laughs> development to We're me, development something completely different. yeah, exactly. So, but um, I don't. I think I just tell people when I talk about it that aren't in that scene, which is like everybody, right. um, that it was just the fundraising. That's, that's what people know. Yeah, exactly. We also use the word advancement, institutional yeah, well, advancement, which is also meaningless in a sense. Yeah, because like everything the institution does should be institutional advancement, right? I mean, like that. Uh, if you're not advancing the institution, then why, why are you doing it? <laughs> can include things like marketing and alumni. Yeah. And so you get it gets to be all. Shocking, not shocking. Turf wars. Yeah. The fundraising people don't like being told what to do by people who aren't. Ah, uh, well, so um, in Chapel Hill, the development office was part of advancement. Right. So, uh, and yeah, you're right. Um, like the. The uh, communications department was under the vice chancellor of advancement. And so um, occasionally I would go over to, uh, to the marketing teams. And they all had Max, which was always annoying to me, but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I think what happened was that uh, we were looking at um, I don't I really know um, I know my wife had applied to Chapel Hill for her fellowship but then I don't think that we were really looking we were probably looking um, but uh, they uh, someone who came out of her fellowship actually got hired by Chapel Hill, but she, she never got like an interview for a job in any of the Triangle places. But I think that I had been 
talking to Yancey about that, okay. about us looking to come to the triangle. Because um, my wife lived like the first 27 years of her life in Wisconsin. And, um, but she did a, uh, like a summer program at Duke. Um, and so she had some familiarity with the triangle. Did she go to medical school? Yeah, yeah. Carolina or? No, she went to uh, medical school at uh, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so uh, then after that, she, um, she did her, her uh, residency in Baltimore. Right. Um, which, uh, I mean, she, she liked the East Coast, and so I was like, well, you know, Triangle's a little bit different than Baltimore, but it's still basically the East Coast. You still have hurricanes. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking to my sister in Bali, and uh, well, actually she's there in their mountain cabin in Boone. Uh, yeah. Even if Dorian doesn't come ashore, it's liable to be days and days and days of drenching rain. Yeah. Trees fall over because the roots get saturated. Right. Yeah, I mean a lot of times uh, in North Carolina, the flooding is way worse than the wind. Yep. I don't know. I think enough. I think further south, places get blasted a little worse with the wind. But yeah. and then uh, South Carolina can get hammered. Yeah, well, I've but, heard of like Wilmington, North Carolina, like the, where the, the coast kind of does like this. Yeah. Hurricanes come this way, and you got the catcher's yeah. mitt. Yeah, but I think I mean most of, for most of North Carolina. The angle is just not right, right for it to get just like, you know, if, if it's going to hit North Carolina, it's going to hit South Carolina first. And I so... To, I went to a friend's wedding, I think it was 2000, right after one of the big ones that hit Charleston. Yeah. And they got crushed. In 2000, you said? Yeah, it was like 2000, 2001. So yeah. Like, might, might have been like Floyd or her friend. I think it was, yeah, okay. one of those. Yeah. But like, we still had the wedding, but... Charleston was like a ghost town. Yeah. People were gone and trees were down and even the hotel where we stayed, the, the ocean side, all the windows had been like blown in. And were water oh stores. yeah. All the rooms on the other side of the hotel. Changing. It's so wet here though you can see that. Oh yeah. There were many hot hot balls last night the water coming down the creek is just so much higher than it's been. Yeah, a lot of the trails have been uh, closed. I mean, not recently, I don't think, too much, but yeah, but in the early, early summer. And then, uh, it looked like that one was taken off, is that right? Or was it landing? Do they come, do they tilt back when they land? I guess they probably do, right? Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, direction-wise, it would make sense if it was landing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does, uh, I think, uh, I've, I've been through here a few times and, um, I think it makes for an interesting video. Yeah. But not necessarily a place I'd want to live. Have you ever flown out of, flown in or out of Midway Airport in Chicago? Uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> you're literally like, you can see the barbecue grills. And oh. <laughs> there's that neighborhood that's just right there and you're like, oh man. I can see in that guy's window. Yeah. I haven't flown in and out of Midway very much. Maybe just once, to be honest. Yeah, well, just, but. For, the reason I do it is if I go to Raleigh, a lot of times Southwest is the cheapest fare. Yeah. But there's no direct, so you have to pay. Uh. So it's either like Nashville or St. Louis. And if I'm going to fly through an airport, I go through Midway. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's the Southwest hub. For it's sure. It's kind of cute. With good little restaurants and stuff. Yeah. And it's not O'Hare, which right, right. is pretty much a bonus for anything. <laughs> Actually, one time, the other thing that's nice about me, 
O'Hare has, you can take the, the blue line, the L, but it takes forever. Oh, yeah. Midway's on the orange, and you're really not that far from downtown. Yeah. Although it's like a rusting tetanus bucket. I mean, <laughs> the, the cars are like the, the jangly chains, yeah. and rusted rivets, and you're just like, oh, Lord. It's like one of those carny rides. Where, Speaking of carny rides, uh, you are you a regular, an annual state fair visitor? Yeah, I went, I went this year. Um, I used to figure out a way to hack it, so all, what I discovered is working in higher ed, almost all the colleges have a booth. Ah! So if you volunteer to work a couple hours at the booth, you get a free ticket. Nice. So I worked at the University of Minnesota, actually at the building. New Carlson had a booth, so. Well, I mean, it's... It's across the street from the university. Right. I mean, not from your building, well, but like campus, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So I, we went. My wife and I went the very first day. It was just, it was the weather. The weather's just been so nice. But I haven't been back. Once is enough. It's so I, crowded. That's the way I felt, but just like for my entire life, once was enough. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think you know this. Um, I'm but I'm a vegetarian, right. and it's like the food is supposed to be like amazing, and I, and uh, There's some vegetarian stuff. There is. More and, than and, there was ten years ago. I no, I do not doubt that at all. Um, actually, uh, Minneapolis, and people say Minneapolis when they mean like the metro area. <laughs> you never know if they really mean Minneapolis, but uh, like they uh, always talk about the like the U.S. team when they came playing in Minneapolis. Yeah. They weren't playing in Minneapolis, they were playing at St. Paul. Uh, but uh, but anyway, with that caveat aside, Minneapolis is becoming uh, apparently one of the best vegan cities in the country. Yes, So, um, We've got a restaurant in my neighborhood called Jay Selby's. Yeah. And they're specialized in vegan junk food. Yeah. Like, it's really not even that healthy. They have like a perfect Big Mac. Not yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, one of the best vegan, I don't know, I, I've only been there once, so I'm not going to say one of the best vegan restaurants, but one of the best vegan dishes I've ever had was at this place in Louisville, Morals Cafe. Okay. Morals, like with the mushroom, not like, oh, sure. not like, uh, you know, the other, the word that means kind of like ethics. <laughs> not that. Um, but uh, they have a, a chick Fole. Um and like granted it's probably been 15 years since I've had a Chick-fil-A sandwich, but I was like, holy cow. Like, I don't think if somebody had given me this if I went to Chick-fil-A, that I would have known the difference. Yeah, well I think you know the Beyond Meat and Impossible Burger. Yeah. That, that, they really are. I mean, you know, to me veggie burgers were like black bean patties, you know? Yeah, and the black bean patties can be good, no doubt. If they're good on their own, I don't necessarily need everything to taste exactly like that. Yeah. One of the things there, looks like somebody's coming up behind me. Huh? Oh. Yeah. I sh I kinda, sometimes I wish I had a mirror. I mean, I know I see people that have them. I just, I don't know. I'd also be worried about like catching it on something. So I, you know, in the, I have to say I have to. I read a lot more of the business press than I used to. Now that I'm teaching in the business. Yeah. Center, the Wall Street Journal is tracking a lot of the the, the news here, vegan startups, yeah, and the possible and all that. Yeah. One of the things they're saying is they really are predicting growth in the number of people who are vegetarian or vegan, Yeah. but they're predicting a massive growth in people like me, who eat meat, but it's fine having Meatless Monday yeah. if it's palatable and, you know, right. yeah. and there's going to be a huge growth for, you know, omnivore, you know, people who right. eat both, and especially if they're, like, like if you and I went out to dinner somewhere, or, you know, my wife is, eats a lot less meat than I do. You know, it's a lot less of a sacrifice. You know, tempeh is great, but it's not what I would eat, you know. But if yeah. there was something like that, or... Like, we had a cookout at my church last weekend, and 
we're trying to, you know, as a congregation, do things that are better for the earth. And we had a cookout, like our end of summer cookout. Yeah. We just had exclusively Impossible Burgers and, and hot dogs. Oh, nice. The people who weren't vegetarians couldn't even tell the difference. So, you know, it's kind of like what I used to do advancement for development. Yeah. You have to be really careful because you can have a, a menu. But if you have a menu that has pork on it, you really put a risk if you have a Jewish or observant Muslim food. But one of the things you can pretty much always get a more of a vegetarian or a vegan menu. Yeah. It's also a lot more culturally sensitive. Yeah. And you don't have to go out of your way and like, oh, I've got kosher food. You can just say like, hey. You're having a vegetarian spread. Yeah, well that's one of the things that I think that uh, a lot of people don't, I mean why, it's not something you would necessarily think about, so I get it, but don't, don't really think about when it comes to Indian cuisine. It's not necessarily there's, there's a whole bunch of vegetarians in India. I mean there are, but, but part of it is is that you have a Muslim population that doesn't eat pork, you have a Hindu population that doesn't eat beef, so it's like if you're a restaurant, just Make it vegetarian. Right. Everybody yeah, can eat it. I mean, the thing is the cheese and stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, well, it, for sure. And, yeah, and Indian food is not good for you. <laughs> in, in large part. Right, it's right. like, <laughs> but it is like the best vegetarian food on the planet. There's, I don't think there's any question about that. <laughs> yeah. Right. cooking or Japanese cooking um, there are a lot of good dishes but like I have a friend who's vegan and he can like taste the shrimp yeah stuff in the even if it's a veggie dish yeah a lot of times there'll be shrimp in the sauce right we um my wife is a uh, daughter of Vietnamese refugees and so um you know she we, it's kind of I don't know what the right right word is like it's nostalgic it's like of home and stuff i mean she not not of like vietnam because she's never lived there but just of like right exactly and so we would go and get pho when we lived in baltimore and you know it's one of these places that's you know family owned 